So we've been looking at uh, two-dimensional motion in a gravitational field. In other words, the only force being acted on, uh, on the object is gravity. And the last example we looked at, um, we were able to determine the initial velocity because it was moving in a horizontal um, direction. So what we want to do now is we want to think about, you know, what if I knew the initial position and I knew the angle it was being um, projected at. In other words, maybe I don't know the initial velocity. Maybe they're not telling me the initial velocity because uh, to use these formulas I need to know the initial velocity and the initial position. Uh, how could I find the initial velocity given the angle uh, and the initial position being zero? Alright, so first thing I want to do is just draw a picture of this situation. And then we're going to see if we can derive some formulas or modify the formulas we have. So we have our initial position is going to be at 0, 0. And the initial velocity, let's do that in this vector right here. This initial velocity is at an angle of theta with the horizontal between 0 and, and pi over 2. So the object, if it's only being acted on by gravity, is going to maybe do something like this. OK, so now the question is, how do I find this initial velocity vector? How could I, how could I write this initial velocity vector? Let's call it vector v sub 0 for the initial velocity vector um, in terms of components here. OK, so I'm writing v sub 0. I don't want to get messed up with uh, notation. I'm, I'm writing this vector v sub 0 to mean the same thing as vector v evaluated at 0, the initial velocity vector. So we want to find a formula for that initial velocity vector over here in terms of the magnitude of that vector and theta. Not theta. How about alpha? So our picture should be pretty helpful here. Let me remove the path out of our picture. And we want to find the components of this. Some of you, I'm sure, are already on it thinking about this. Um, so the magnitude of this velocity vector is its length. So we can go, let's go ahead and label that in our picture here, the magnitude of this velocity vector. So that's going to be some scalar. That's the length of that vector. How can I find the components of vector v sub 0 given these two pieces of information? If you don't already have it, this might be giving you a hint. Some sine and cosine, right? All right, so my initial velocity vector is going to be, this is going to be cosine. Uh, let's put the magnitude first. Magnitude times the cosine of alpha, and then the y component is going to be the magnitude, whatever that scalar is, times the sine of alpha. So we're doing this because in our previous derivation, we needed to know a couple things. We needed to know the initial velocity vector, and we needed to know the initial position. So now we have a new u sub 0 and v sub 0 if we're given the angle. Right? So this is all about what information you're given. If you're given the initial velocity vector in this form, you, know, you don't need to use this formula. But if you're given the angle that something is uh, its initial angle, and you're given the initial position at 0, 0, we're going to use this pieces of information to derive a new formula. So you can think of these as your, your u sub 0 now and your v sub 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to substitute this initial velocity and our initial position. So remember, our initial position, let's call that vector r sub 0, is at 0, 0. So this, is only, this formula is only going to be good for initial position of 0, 0. And we're going to substitute those into the general expression for velocity and position um, that we derived down here below. All right, so we had before, we were saying, OK, the initial velocity is u sub 0 minus g times t plus v sub 0. And what we're going to do now is we're going to substitute we're going to substitute the magnitude of v sub 0 cosine theta in for u. And we're going to substitute the magnitude of v sub 0 sine 
alpha in for v sub 0. That is our new initial velocity. So our general velocity vector can be found for any value of t in the domain by taking the magnitude of the initial velocity vector, which is your initial speed, right, times the cosine of alpha and then negative gt plus the initial speed sine alpha. All right, how about our position vector? So our position vector was given by, let's see if I can squeeze this all in here, u sub 0 t plus x sub 0, and the second component is negative half gt squared plus v sub 0 t plus y sub 0. Now our x sub 0 and y sub 0 are just 0, 0 because our initial position is 0, 0. So th those substitutions are going to be pretty easy. For the u sub 0 and the v sub 0, we're going to substitute in the expressions um, right here from our initial velocity vector. All right, let's see if we can squeeze this in, see what we get. All right, so this is going to equal the magnitude of v sub 0 cosine alpha times t plus x sub 0, which is just 0. And then we have negative 1 half gt squared plus v sub 0, which is the initial mag, uh, speed times sine alpha, initial speed b times sine alpha, and then luckily y sub 0 is 0, so I'll be able to fit this on my screen here. All right, so now we have a formula for the position and the velocity if we're given the initial angle and the initial position at 0, 0. So put a little star by those, put a little box around those. We're going to need these to do some other things, to, to derive some other things. This is my R position. Now, in the previous example, we were looking at some problems where we were finding time of flight and range. And that's what we want to do next with these parameters here. So I'm going to scroll down here to this guy. And these are the things we're going to try to derive next, OK? Well, we are going to derive them. As Yoda says, there is no try, just do. So assume an object traveling over horizontal ground acted uh, on only by gravitational force has initial position 0, 0, and initial velocity magnitude v sub 0 cosine alpha, magnitude v sub 0 sine alpha. So these, these are the things we just verified you know, we, we uh, came up with that triangle and came up with these values here, okay? So now what we want to show are these three things, the time of flight, the range, and the maximum height. And I'm going to get you guys started on this, and then I want you to um, finish it up. So do you remember how we found time of flight in that previous example? Let's go back and look at that example real quick here. This time of flight. Oop, there we go, this baseball example. Okay, so the time of flight t, the time of flight is found by figuring out where the y of t component equals 0 of your position function. So you want to take your position function, take your y of t, and set that equal to 0, and that will tell you the time that it takes for the object to hit the ground. Make sense? So we're going to do the same thing for this angle problem here. So let's go back and see our position function. So here's our position function right here if we know the angle. So if I want to know the time that it's going to take for that object to hit the ground or the time of flight, then what I want to do is I want to figure out when is this y component going to equal 0. All right, so let's set that up over here. So find a formula for the flight time t of the object. So our y, oopsie. Our y of t 
if our position function is given by x of t, y of t, right? We want to find where y of t equals 0. That's what we're trying to figure out. We want to find the value of t. So let's go ahead and label that again with a capital T. So we want to figure out where y of capital T equals 0. So look at your formula for y of capital T, which is negative 1 half g capital T squared plus magnitude of the initial velocity vector sine of alpha times t, oh, capital T. And we want to figure out where that's equal to 0. Did I write that t on the last one? Let's go back here and make sure I didn't lose that when we were deriving this, because I was running out of room here. Oh yeah, that t right there needs to go there. Let me put that in there. Let's write this out a little bit nicer. OK, so negative, negative 1 half gt squared plus v sub 0, which is the magnitude of the initial velocity vector sine alpha times t. There we go. And then plus y sub 0, which is 0. I was trying to save room there. But you can't drop a variable just because you're saving room. OK, so now all we have to do is solve this formula for capital T. And we'll have a formula for the time of flight of an object that's launched at a certain angle. OK, and it should come out to be this guy down here. All right, let's uh, set up the next one. I want you guys to finish this. You guys finish this. So number four, find a formula for the range of the object. Do you remember how we did the range of this problem up here? The first thing we did is we found the time of flight. And then to find the range of the object, we took that time of flight and we substituted it in for the x component, uh, x of t. We substituted in for t and x of t in the position function. OK, so that's what we're going to have to do over here. So once you get this formula all figured out, once you get this formula all figured out, that's going to be your time of flight, right? So that's going to be your time of flight, you know, whatever this is here. We'll have this stuff. So to find a formula for the range of the object, you're going to take the formula for the x component of the position function, which is the magnitude of the initial velocity times cosine alpha times t. And you're going to plug in all this stuff into there. So it's going to go all into there. And then you're going to have to um, simplify that. All right, so when you simplify all this stuff, that should give you a formula for the range of the object. And that should come out to be this guy right here. So I want you to do that. Oopsie, sorry. I want you to do that and complete that and, and show that that is what you get when you do the range. Last one. We want to find a formula for the maximum height of the object by finding when y of t, the derivative of that, equals 0. In other words, the vertical height is not changing. All right, so we have our formula for y of t, which is given by negative 1 half gt squared plus the initial velocity magnitude times sine of alpha times t. So you're going to take the derivative of that, and you're going to set it equal to 0. You're going to take the derivative of that, and then you're going to set that equal to 0. And you're going to get some value for t. Let's call this t sub, let's call this, uh, t sub m. Right, t sub m. So when you're done, you're going to have some formula down here for t sub m, meaning the time that it reaches a maximum. OK, so you'll have some formula for that to find the time when it reaches the maximum height. Now, if we actually want to find the maximum height, if we want to find the maximum height, then we need to find the y value at this time. So we'll take um, our formula for y of t negative 1 half g t squared magnitude initial velocity vector sine alpha t. 
And uh, what fun thing awaits us is we're going to take this formula and we're going to plug it into there. So then you're going to have to substitute it here and you're going to have to substitute it here and do some wonderful simplifying. And then you will have a formula for the maximum height of the object. And you should come up with this guy. Now in this in your book here, they've got capital T over 2, where capital T is the time of flight divided by 2. Um, we can just call this what I've done above. I've called this little T sub M, which is the time of the maximum height. Okay? Which, if you think about parabolic motion, is uh, especially if you have only if you have an object starting at 0, 0, and you have some motion like this, and this value here. Uh, is occurs at capital T time of flight, then this value here is going to occur, if this occurs at capital T, then this is going to occur at capital T divided by 2, all right, which I have labeled as T sub M, time of maximum height. All right, so once we get these formulas derived, we could actually use these formulas to find the range of an object, to find the time of flight for a particular situation. And all we would have to know would be um, the angle and the initial velocity, which is kind of neat. So if I had, if I said, okay, I'm going to launch something from a point, which you can always move it to be 0, 0, right? You can always shift things, even if it started at 10 feet, just move it down. and. Anyway, you could shift it around to make that work. And let's say I told you I'm going to launch this thing at an angle of 40 degrees with an initial velocity of whatever, I don't know, 150 feet per second squared. So with just this information, we can find the time of flight, the range, and the maximum height, right? Because this initial velocity is the magnitude of the initial velocity vector. And then, of course, we have our angle, which we can just plug into here. Um, and then we have gravity, which, depending on the units, will pick the correct constant that we want to use for gravity. So go ahead and finish up these problems. Make sure you can get all these formulas to work out. And that will wrap up this section.